I wanted to build a side table that had tapered legs, a top that was chamfered, and other unique details. Let's get started by building the legs. I set up a real simple taper jig that will taper this piece of stock from one and three quarter inches at the top down to one inch on the bottom. After I make the first cut, I flip it over 90 degrees so that I can make the second inside taper. And now I have a leg that's tapered on two sides. I cut the legs to 24 inches on the table saw using a sled. I have a stop set up, but I have to make sure that I put one of the flat faces against the fence or my angles will be wrong. I want to go ahead and start working on the top because this will be a glue up and I don't want the flow of the project to be interrupted waiting on dry time. I've already jointed the edges, but I want this top to be dead flat, so I go ahead and joint one face on each of the boards. And then I plane them to final thickness, 3 quarter inch. The glue up is straightforward. I just want to make sure that I don't over tighten the clamps and bow the material. I tighten just enough to start getting some squeeze out and then that's as far as I go with it. And now it's time to start building the skirts. I'm ripping these to four inches and these boards are long enough that I can get all four pieces out of them. The skirts follow the inside taper of the leg, so I have to find that angle and set the fence accordingly. In this case, I set the fence to about 1.5 degrees. I have a stop set up, and I'm making sure that when I flip the part, I keep the proper orientation. Tapers can be challenging to keep up with during assembly, so I indicate the tapers ahead of time. The glue up on the top turned out great. I'm using a scraper to knock down the dried glue before I sand it. All the parts were sanded before assembly and since I'm using a monocoat finish, I only sand a 120. I use an eighth inch round over bit to knock the hard edge off of all four corners of the legs. Now it's time to build the trim piece below the skirts. I've already planed this material to half an inch and I'm going to rip four pieces an inch and a quarter wide. These pieces also have to follow the same inside taper of the legs, just like the skirts. Once again, I'm using a stop on the fence to keep all the parts consistent. I use the same eighth inch round over bit to eliminate the hard edges on these pieces. I rip one inch off of one of the skirts. One piece will be the drawer face, the other piece will be the lower drawer frame. Now it's time for assembly. The parts will be glued together and for the joinery I'll be using screw pockets. I prefer to use a low angle pocket but those units can be kind of pricey so use what you have. Just clamp it really good and you'll be fine. These shims are 3 eighths of an inch and they will provide the reveal that I want to achieve on the front.
A tip for achieving good results using screw pockets is to try to closely approximate the angle of the pocket with your driver. This will allow the screw to follow its intended path. It also reduces the opportunity for the parts to move. When I install the lower trim piece, I want it to set up quickly so that I can keep the project moving, so I use rapid fuse which means I have about 30 seconds to get this right. These shims will provide an eighth inch reveal. I drive these screws slowly because I don't want to take a chance on a screw blowing out the bottom of this trim piece. And here you can see the reveals that were achieved and how it gives a nice aesthetic. The way that I know where to install this lower door frame, or maybe it's a front skirt, is because I actually marked its location before I cut the part. Unlike the other sides, this trim piece can't be attached with screw pockets. The glue will be sufficient, but I just clamp it really good. The rest of the frame assembly is straightforward by just going around each of the sides attaching the skirts. I need to build slides for the drawer, and I just use scraps that were left over. Before I can rip the top to its final dimension, I have to get it square. This blank is a little bit too big for the sled, so I have to improvise. Once I have two sides square, I can just rip it to its final dimension using the fence on the table saw. I use this jig to get the chamfer on the top. I set the blade angle on the saw to 15 degrees and just run the material through. These half inch pieces of maple will become the drawer box. I'm cutting a quarter inch slot to accept the bottom panel. And then I rip the bottom panel. The drawer box is also assembled using screw pockets. The front pockets will be covered by the drawer face and you would have to remove the drawer completely to see the pockets on the back. I install the drawer slides to work out the position and movement of the drawer. I'll have to remove these to install the top, but now's the time to work all this out. These are sliders that go on the bottom of furniture legs. They also make nice glides for drawers. I've drilled a small pilot hole to allow me to strategically place these not only on the drawer, but also on the drawer glide assembly. I sanded these down a little bit to go on the sides to help keep alignment in the drawer channel. Once everything was positioned to my satisfaction, I go ahead and attach the drawer face.
I wanted to make my own handle, so I take a piece of the half inch scrap and I rip it to one inch. Then I cut it to five inches. Then I use the eighth inch round over bit on all the edges. After drilling pilot holes, I install these threaded inserts. These are brass and they're soft and they break very easy, so you have to be careful when you install them. I had a friend turn me a 3 quarter inch walnut dowel. I'll use this to make a spacer. I left the threaded insert standing proud of the surface so that I could use that part to thread onto the spacer. And then I drill holes in the drawer face to install my handle. I realized that I needed a chamfer on the drawer slides so the drawer wouldn't catch. These are also used to make stops for the drawer. I'll be using tabletop fasteners to attach the top, so I need to drill a pocket for the fastener to rest in. Once these were installed, I can attach the top. Before I apply the finish, I want to clean it by wiping it down with mineral spirits. This also gives me an estimation of what it will look like once the finish is applied. I use two-part Rubio Monocote Pure for the finish on this table. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something, but more importantly, I hope you got some of your own ideas. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me some comments. And don't forget to read the video description box below for more information about this project if you want to try it on your own. Thanks for watching.